hey, we're diving directly into using our springs and engineering projects with popsicle sticks, with all sorts of different ways of, of getting them to move and reasons to do it. Let's get right into it. I started to type up all the things that a student's gonna be learning while we're doing these projects with springs and I'm, I'm running out of space here. In addition to all these, I just wanna show that there are a lot of things you can learn while you're being a creator like this. There's, there's no limit to what kind of things we can have a spring connected to and it, it brings them to life. This one will, as soon as I pull this, the skewer out, it'll launch. So here we go, ready, set. And here's my last example of just rubber bands helping something be spring loaded and having it pop back up. What I'm loving about this project and why I'm so excited that my engineers are gonna be starting it, we're gonna be talking about springs that pull and push and how you attach it, how that matters, spring diameter. This is gonna get stuff in your head that's really easy to understand. It's gonna be easy to digest. Well, if you watch the whole video, there's gonna be stuff that you kinda of carry with you until the perfect moment. You never know when you're gonna to need to use this and you never know how one little spring can turn a great project into an amazing project. Here's where this lands with all the other beginner practice or advanced engineer projects. This is gonna be advanced. We're gonna to have to be able to build things that work well. We're gonna be able to be able to troubleshoot stuff. So make sure that you have some solid skills before you attempt too much of this. Here's the board we're gonna be building. We're gonna have a, a spring loaded setup right here. We're gonna learn about how tension forces make these springs happen. We'll touch the, the paddle boards. We're gonna be making a spring-loaded chomper with a spring and a rubber band-loaded one of the same. We'll talk about what's good and bad about both of those. Springs that push are the ones that compress. These are the kind of springs that you'll find in a ballpoint pen. I'll have a friction brake getting made. This is to help hold it in any position. This is just to show how to make a strong hinge and put a, a spring in the middle. And here's making a plunger. A plunger that wants to go. Lastly, we're gonna talk about how it matters when you attach from near to far. There's a big difference between these two. And we're gonna talk about how spring diameter matters. Tiny springs versus large springs. They make a huge difference. So let's get going. And you're absolutely gonna need some attention to detail while you do this. You can't go fast and just throw a bunch of hot glue down and, and, and hope it works out. We gotta put things exactly where they go. So take your time and do a nice job. This is a spring that pulls. So I have to pull it and it pulls back. And if I clip it here, that force between these two posts, that's called a tension force. And so we're gonna start off with a spring loaded catch. And so this this little trigger, this little flapper, is going to be stretching this spring and like my finger right here can pull it back and let it go. We're going to have something that can let it go just like this. So if you're trying to do this for real, set where the flipper pivots first. I've already got this point figured out. Figure out how that piece wants to go. Number two, you're going to anchor the main spring. Get that main spring just where you want it so that the flipper is all the way up past where it flips and then test it. Pull the flipper down to make sure that it can go the full motion you want it to go. And then the last step, you're gonna set that catch. If the flipper comes down, this catch has to be set right in the right spot so that it will catch it, but then also release it. If I want it to go back to here, that means this catch needs to catch it right at that spot. And we're going to get our spring set too. Here it is once the glue is all dried. Here's the catch. Here's the flapper. It's spring loaded. Clink. Now these paintball paddles they have the spring connected right here and the base is right here. These have straws 
uh, connected to the paddle so that you're not gluing the paddle to the stick. The straw slides around the stick. These dinosaur heads that I've created, one of them is going to have a rubber band pop, moving it up and down, and the other one is going to use a spring for the motion. And we're going to talk about what's good about each of those and what's not so good about each of those. And so this dinosaur head, the spring, is pretty peppy, it's fast. I'm connecting it pretty close to the pivot. We're going to see that in a minute, why that's really important. I'm not going to connect it down here at the end. It's a pretty good time. The rubber band works kind of the same way. We have the same amount of stretch, comes back. This one's a little more forgiving, a little easier to mount. You can see this uh, two little straps did it. It's good for an engineer to start thinking in terms of pros and cons. There's more than one way to do something. And this spring versus rubber band thing is a good way to get your head thinking in terms of, okay, there's multiple choices, which one's the best? The pros for a spring will be that it stops pulling at a set point. When that spring is compressed, it stops pulling and then it is rigid, it, it will be solid. The pinball paddles use the fact that these stop at a certain point to hold the paddle in the right spot when you're not touching it. They're more durable when they're set upright. So the, this is gonna be lasting a long time. This could last for years in the same place doing the exact same thing if you set it upright. The downside of springs is that they can be overstretched. I personally take my overstretched springs and I use them for bobbleheads. So if somebody overstretched this spring and I've been snipping it up every time someone wants to make a little bobblehead project I just cut an overstretched string the other the other you need to have a strong mount and you need to have it uh, thought through better rubber bands on the other hand they can wrap around things they are softer and so if you want to just have it supported by a rubber band that's a great pro they're easier to mount. You saw in my example, I just used popsicle sticks and glued them right to it. And they're easy to adjust the size. You can, you can tie a knot in a rubber band. You can double it up. You can make them a different size. If you want to add them together, it's much easier than springs. The downside of rubber bands, these are called cons. They slowly get weaker over time. They're kind of overstretched and they will break down over time. If you expect a rubber band to be working perfectly in a couple of years, you're probably gonna be disappointed. <clears throat> so I didn't really like how this one shut too far. So what I did is I put a little stopper here. And so now it springs to here, same on this side. You can always make it stop. And what's nice about that is that this never gets loose and these rubber bands stay tight all the time. So we gotta move on to springs that push, compression springs, springs that as you force them together, they start pushing outward. Well, the first example I'll go over is this friction, uh, the hinge push over here. This was tough to make, but when you take popsicle sticks and you layer them up on the sides, you can give yourself a nice strong hinge at the back and something strong to go on the front. From there, I just put the spring that I was trying to get in there. And as I push it, it springs right back. That's the simplest one, hinge push. Then what I'm gonna call a friction break over here. Now this piece, it spins pretty freely. I don't like how much it spins. I wanna be able to set it somewhere and have it stay there. And so I have a spring on top of it, on top of this post. And what's gonna happen is as I squeeze down that is going to lock it in place. At the moment, here's a side view of what I'm looking at. I've got my base at the bottom and then my spinny thing with nothing really holding me on top. The spring has no weight. As you press down on the spring, that's gonna pr press more and more and more. The spinny thing is gonna get pressed into the base more and it's gonna get harder to spin. 
This is where we land. The spinny thing is getting pressed down and we need to glue a cap right up here at the top. Let's call it a top for now. So this little piece is going to slide down the post. I'm going to compress the spring about halfway and from there it's going to really make this hard to move. Now this is just a piece. Here's the spring inside of here. You pull back and it'll launch a marble. So if I pull it back, marble's ready to launch, launches the marble. Really pretty simple. The, the problem is that we need to make sure that this corner is strong enough to support that pull and gives it a good strong push. If, if it's a floppy corner, it's not going to work out. Where you attach the spring matters. If you're going to be close to the pivot or far from the pivot, it's going to make, a, make kind of a big difference. So I've got two pivots here. Here's where it pivots. Here's where it pivots. And on this one, I'm going to have the spring attach way here at the end. And here I'm going to have it pretty close to the pivot. And so you can see the spring only has to stretch a little ways when that flipper flips. Let's take a look at what we get if we put the spring far away from the pivot. Watch how far this point is going to travel as it flips. Same amount of flip, but that spring is going to have to get four or five times longer than it is right now to do the same thing. That's why you, it's usually better to put it near the pivot. So I've got a set. Here is the close to pivot. You can see if I pull right here, it moves quick. It's pretty snappy and I can't overstretch this smaller spring. The spring is pretty small, but I still can't overstretch it. Pretty safe setup right here. It's pretty great. Where I have it set up far from the pivot, that same amount of force does almost nothing. If I push much harder, now it, it'll go almost as far, but the spring is in danger of being overstretched. And now this last little demonstration, how spring diameter really kind of matters. These tiny springs, they are very strong, but they don't have much stretch to them. I can stretch this one, pulling about as hard as I can, an extra inch out from here to here. So this tiny one, it's strong, and that can be good if you're trying to do something like this, where you want something to have a strong pull near the pivot. That's great. A lot of times we end up using these large diameter ones. They're a lot more forgiving. You don't have to pull quite so hard and they stretch a lot further. Here are the common problems I see when kids are doing this. They'll get glue all up on the sides of a spring. And if you glue the spring together, it stops being a spring. It stops being a spring wherever there is glue. Number two, not finding a way to anchor the, the attachment down strongly enough. You gotta think about it. You can't just try to glue it down. You've seen me stab a skewer everywhere we're gonna be putting it. And then the last problem is overstretching. These springs, if you overstretch them, you can't undo that. So do everything you can to, to place it in the right spot so that it only stretches a, a small amount. Hey, I just want to thank you for watching my video all the way to the end. Uh, Innovative Arts class and Puzzle Shift Create are my life's work and I'm going to be trying to change education, how it works and how everything can happen in, uh, in a classroom. We, we could be doing so much more in such cool ways. So thanks for doing awesome stuff and I can't wait to see what you make.